Hey, I'm Ben, one of the chefs at Sorted Food, and today I'm going to show you two ways to make cake. Both versions, super, super simple. What it actually is, is one basic recipe that I'll show you two awesome variations of. It is my absolute go-to because it doesn't even need much of a recipe. It's so easy to remember as a ratio, plus super versatile. So you can bake it with all different types of flavors and styles. It's been my foolproof recipe since I was eight years old. Step one, preheat the oven to the magic temperature, 180 degrees Celsius. Step two, you do need to weigh the ingredients out, but it's easy to remember. For every egg you use, you also need 50 grams of butter, 50 grams of caster sugar, and 50 grams of self-raising flour. So it's 50, 50, 50 to every egg. Believe it or not, that's it. But I'm gonna show you a few other tips and tricks as we go along to make them perfect. To start off with, cream together the butter and the caster sugar. The butter should be at room temperature. And then in a bowl with plenty of space, beat it together or cream it together. You want something that is light, fluffy and pale in colour. More pale than the yellow butter you've just added. Now you're going to beat loads of air into it. You see already, much paler, more volume, super light and creamy. This is one of the two raising agents that gives you a wonderful light sponge. The raising agent is mechanical. It's beating air into the mix. And the second one is in our flour, self-raising flour. Now that's quite a British thing, I think. However, you can make your own for every 100 grams of flour, add a teaspoon of baking powder. It's basically got a chemical raising agent in there. When it gets wet, it activates and gives you lift and rise in your cake. So I told you the ratio. For this first style of cake, I'm gonna double it. So 100 grams of each and two eggs. With every egg you beat in, add one teaspoon of your flour. It just stops the mix from curdling, but you're still at this stage putting in air. Is there a reason you're using a spatula and not a whisk? I use a spatula because I use the same thing throughout. You could use a whisk to put air in it first, but then you're gonna to want to change it to a flat thing to fold the flour in later. And then you're gonna need a spatula to scrape all of it out of the bowl so you waste none. So for me, I just use the same utensil for the whole thing. Easy. Lovely. Another tip would be to make sure that all your ingredients are the same temperature. So room temperature butter, but also room temperature eggs. It just helps. A little bit more flour. Now I think personally, even if you're flavoring your cake, you should still put in a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla helps to bring out all the other flavors. Although in this instance, we're just gonna do vanilla and blueberry. So at this stage, a splash of vanilla extract as my flavor. A quality vanilla paste, just a little bit like that. And lastly, you're gonna fold in the rest of your flour. And I like to sieve it into the bowl. The reason being, it will get rid of any lumps, but secondly, you're adding in more air. And then you wanna fold that in nice and gently to keep all of that air in. Figures of eight, till it's combined. The first recipe today I'm gonna to make is one of the first cakes I ever baked aged eight, and it is butterfly cakes. Blueberry butterfly cakes. You might otherwise know them as fairy cakes or even a version of cupcake without all of the frosting. I've deliberately started with this recipe because it is the same ratio you can go 101 ways with. It's the same for Victoria sponge. However, today I'm gonna to put them into these cupcake cases. Now you want to about three quarter fill them and I'm gonna do that with a piping bag for ease but you could just plop it in. You can bake these off as they are, or you can add something. Now I'm gonna add in fresh blueberries and I'm gonna push four or five into each cake so that as the cake rises around them, they'll kind of envelop. But you could do the same with chocolate chips if you like. Into the oven, they'll need about 15 minutes, but keep an eye on them basically until they're risen, golden, and when you push it, it kind of springs back. With the cakes cooled, you can enjoy them just as they are, a dusting of icing sugar to make them look wonderful, but, this little thing will take me back down memory lane and it'll also give me a chance to show you just how beautiful these are on the inside. Slice off the very top of each cake. I'm gonna cut the top in half and do the same with a few more. With some double cream whipped to soft peaks and then sweetened with icing sugar, I'm just gonna pipe little roses and then you put the wings of the butterfly back in and a trio of fresh bloob. So old school, literally like I was eight years old again. Blueberry butterfly cakes. One egg, 50 grams of all the rest. <music> oh, 
Our second cake is going to be a lemon, ginger and hibiscus drizzle cake. Oh. Yep, yeah, it's... <laughs> I wasn't expecting the inhale of breath. It is so delicious, but just as easy. We're gonna cook this one in a loaf tin, but if it's a loaf tin or sandwich tins to make like a Victoria sponge, then I feel like four eggs is a good volume. So same ratio. Four eggs then becomes 200 grams of butter, 200 grams of sugar, and 200 grams of self-raising flour. Same ratio. Look at the color now and then again in a minute. And just as before, one egg at a time with a teaspoon of flour each time. This isn't vanilla flavored cake, but still vanilla because it just helps everything else. Having beaten a lot of air into it, we now need to fold in the flour just as before, but this time, not only the vanilla, I'm gonna add another flavor, and that is the zest of lemon. Obviously, you can use grapefruit, orange, lime. There you go, four different cakes, but the same method. I'm also gonna add in a little drop of ginger extract. Sounds fancy, but it's been in our cupboard for a while, so why not use it? You use whatever flavors you've got. You can put spice in here, like ground cinnamon or mixed spice. You can put peppermint, lemon, orange, orange blossom, any flavorings into here at this stage before you fold in the flour. I should say though, it's lemon zest and they're powerful extracts, not juice. You don't want to offset the ratio you've just done. Don't add lemon juice in, just the lemon zest. Then sift in the flour. This will all look very similar. As a reason being, it's the same method every single time, whether you're making individual cakes, loaf tin cakes, sandwich cakes. I even made a wedding cake on this basis. Yes, it's self-raising flour, but you also want to keep all that air in there. You want both forms of raising agent. So you're folding relatively gently. Make sure you dig down to the bottom and you're cutting through in that figure of eight. And once it's all combined, Carefully scoop it into your loaf tin, lined with baking paper to make it easier later on. Guess what? Same temperature, 180 degrees Celsius. Obviously it's gonna need longer than 15 minutes. I'd say probably 40, but the way to check, it'll be risen, it'll be golden, and it will spring back when poked. It took 40 minutes and it's come out of the oven. It's risen, it's golden. It springs back if you press it, and if you listen to it, no sound. And that sounds bizarre, but if it's still got fats that are moving and it's still liquid in the middle, then it will kind of hiss and sizzle. At this point, take a skewer and just stab it loads of time. This is the drizzle part. You've probably heard of lemon drizzle cake. You basically make a lemon syrup and you pour it into the sponge whilst it's hot and it absorbs and makes the whole thing so unctuous. It doesn't need to be lemon syrup. It can be any syrup you like. Passion fruit syrup, blood orange syrup, lime syrup. We're gonna do lemon and hibiscus syrup. So I keep having hibiscus in loads of gin cocktails and places that I go. It's, it's such a delicious flavor. And this is a syrup that's been made with the hibiscus flour, which gives you this wonderful color. And to it, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice because you don't want the syrup you pour over it to be too sweet. You hope that it's just gonna drizzle into that cake. It will fall down to the bottom of the loaf tin, but that's why you do it while it's still in the tin. It will soak in. It will soak back up and it will give that wonderful pink tinge and that herbal floral flavor that hibiscus is so good at. Then let it completely cool. That syrup will absorb into the sponge before taking out the tin. We're gonna ice it and slice it. To finish it, this is just icing sugar let down with enough water so that it dribbles and then we'll garnish it with those candied hibiscus flowers and lemon zest. If you got consistency of the icing right, it should just very slowly run and set. But just let it dribble over the edges in different places. It's not meant to be perfect, he says. Three's the magic number. Those candied hibiscus, flowers, and a zesting of lemon. There we go, lemon, ginger, and hibiscus drizzle cake. Exactly the same ratio for every one egg, 50 grams of butter, 
sugar and self-raising flour. There we go, two versions that I absolutely love. I can't wait to see what you guys get up to. So comment down below with the flavors, the styles, the shapes that you would love to do with the same cake batter ratio. Plus, if you like this idea of learning one component that you can then mix and match, then you'll love our Meal Packs app. Essentially, it's the same thing for midweek cooking, a bunch of skills that empower you to boss your midweek meals every single week, hassle-free. And even less hassle on your wallet this month, it's free free for a whole month, go and try it out. And all that plugging made me hungry. Mike, which one do you want to try? First. Both. Yes, which you going? Actually, I'll tell you what, let's, I want to open this. I want to show you why this is my favorite simple cake batter. Because you just get this wonderful sponge. Don't involve. I use exactly the same method for tears of a wedding cake with passion fruit syrup. It's so good. Wow. Wow. That is stunning. 